So this was a fun video to make. <laughs> More fun was seeing everybody's version of it, but it made me think about sharing how to scroll the background. So as you can see, when we're playing it, you're only seeing what's on the canvas. But when I stop, you can see that it's overlapping on the side. And what I'm doing is, while the characters are either moving to the right, or some of them are walking to the left, let's see, like the girl with the dog, I also have the background scrolling. So I thought I'd show you how to do that if you're not aware. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my studio and backgrounds. And there's so much stuff in the Create Studio that I usually just use a keyword to at least start my search. And here I know that I have this. Now this is a group. You can go in and see what's in the group like that. And what it has is the background and then you can change the text of the stores if you want. You also can open a group, which is how I normally do it, is I just double click, double tap on my touchpad. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this. And now I have two of them. I also, often how I do it is I just do Command D on my keyboard and I get the duplicate. So however you want to do it. Now the problem is, how do we put them together? If we go on this edge, that doesn't look good. If we go on this other edge, that doesn't look good. So let me just put them both back to the center. So what I do, excuse me, <clears throat> is I go to properties. I click on one of them. I go to properties. And here you can flip it horizontally or vertically. I'm going to do horizontally. Now, oops, I clicked the wrong one. That kind of looks all right, right? I mean, it would look kind of silly maybe in real life, but it'll work for our purposes. Now it's not completely together. So I'm going to select the one on the right. I'm going to use my keyboard arrow to just shift it a little. Let's see. Now it doesn't look like we're seeing any of the background. I'm going to use my keyboard. I'm just going to hit F and it just brings us back to the full view of the screen so it's not zoomed in. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to select both of these and you can select group or I often use the keyboard shortcut command G. Now they'll move together and you don't have to work with them separately. So I'm going to start it here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure if I am off this, if it's not highlighted in blue, it's not going to let me do animation. It's going to pl say, please select an element. So I'm going to select the group, add an animation. I am going to choose position and the easing of linear. I'm going to take this keyframe and move it to the end. And then while I'm clicked on that, I'm going to shift it all going to the left. So I use my shift and my arrow key on my keyboard. Now I didn't expand the elements underneath because they are in a group. I can show you that too. Um, so this might go a little faster than the one I had. Now you don't want to go too far because then you see the background. So you just want to go. This would be the furthest you want to go. You can even stop before. So let's see. And there it just scrolls. Now, if you want to go in and add characters like we did, you can open the group by selecting it. And you have open group 
or what I do a lot of times is I just double click. But if I double click in the middle of the keyframes, it's not going to let me do it. If I click and make sure I'm off the keyframes on the other side, it will open. So in mine, I had some characters, right? So I can go in here and I'm going to grab some 3D characters. So let's see who I have downloaded. I know I have Hipster Girl. So I can size her to whatever I want. Let's put her there. Let's get another one. I know I have Grandma. And let's put her there. And I'm not making them do anything fancy right now. I'm just going to put them on the canvas. And all I'm doing here is clicking right here on the end. And if you click on that and drag, it will extend the action. I also want to make sure I have some from when it scrolls to the left and we see more on the right. So the way I can move my um, my image is I can use my space bar, click on my space bar and see how that's also highlighting here. So you can click that. I tend to use my space bar and then I just click and drag it over. I just moved it um, all the way over, sorry. Then I can go in and who else do I have? I don't want to take time to download anything. Um, looks like I've got him. So let's put him there. And again, I'm going to put him from the start. Grab that little gray mark and drag him. So let's just have those few right now. Ooh, sized him pretty silly. All right, let's go back to the main timeline. Now, because I put them in the group, they're going to scroll with the scene. If I had put the character here, it's not going to scroll with it. He's just going to have the background moving behind him. So you want to make sure you go in the group and add your characters. And that's really all there is to a scrolling background. I've done it in a number of different ways. Um, I've done some of the gradient. Let's see, I haven't even gone to see those yet. So let's see where those are so i don't have any bet i don't have any downloaded right now so let's just download one so i've done that with the gradient as well so let's see and let's make this resolution a square and i'm going to expand it so this will expand it now you see it goes over all of it. I've actually done something where I have the gradient background and I do the same thing. I do the linear position. I hold down my shift key with my arrow. I move it that way. And then I've also then added another one. So I'm still on this keyframe. I'm going to add another animation, another position, linear, put it at the end, and then I've made it go back, shift and my arrow. I didn't intend to show this, but it just came to mind. So then what you see is then it just moves. If you have a square one, then it will make it just change the colors a little bit because as you can see, it's just moving that way. And then you don't have to keep duplicating it to make it go. You can have it go back and forth. So that's how 
oh, I changed the, um, <laughs> I changed the resolution. So that got all done. Let's go back to this. So that's how you make the scrolling background. Easy. And then you can always, oh, the one thing I didn't show is then this is another part that you actually, I showed you how when I put Haru up there, he didn't move. But you can see I don't plan these <laughs> talks in advance because I, this just came to mind. So here I can also have my little friend here. Let's make her instead of waving, let's make her walking. You can also disable the starting. So see how right here she's facing us and then she moves. But say I just want her to start from moving. I can disable the starting. So it just starts with her moving. I can also disable the ending if you don't want her to stop and go back to idle. So if you look at her, then she turns and she looks at the camera again. I can disable that. So let me just show you why I was doing this. I am going to, just like I did the scene, I am going to flip her right like that. You also can use it right up here in the menu. So if you see her, then she flips. Those are the two places you can do that. In properties, flip, or right up here. So now I can have her walking and not even animate her with position and scale because the scene behind her is moving so it looks like she's moving through the space. All right, that's it.